Word order is the order of the words in the sentences of a language. Some languages have fairly fixed word order, such as English, where it's hard to change the order of words in a sentence without changing its meaning or making it complete gibberish. Other languages, such as Latin and Czech, have relatively flexible word order. For example, adjectives modifying a noun can be placed far away from the noun they modify in these two languages. But even in the languages with the most flexible of word orders, the order of phonemes, the distinct sounds in the language, is still relatively fixed within the word. You can't scramble the phonemes within the sentence however you like and still expect the sentence to be recognizable. But is it possible for a language to have completely flexible phoneme order? In other words, can there be a language where the order of the phonemes conveys no information? To start, let's define some terms. We'll call languages where the order of the phonemes in the utterance conveys some information, ordered languages. So all natural languages are ordered languages. And languages where the order conveys no information, we'll call unordered languages. At an abstract level, utterances in ordered languages can be thought of as arrays containing phonemes. The length of the array is the number of phoneme positions in the utterance, and each entry of the array contains the phoneme at the corresponding position. This means that there is only a fixed set of possible values for each entry, while the length is not fixed and can vary between utterances. On the other hand, since we throw away order in unordered languages, the information that's left is the counts of each of the phonemes of the language in the utterance. We call this the phoneme count of each phoneme. Utterances can then be thought of as phoneme count arrays, arrays where each entry is the phoneme count of a different phoneme. This means that the values can be arbitrarily large, while the length of the array is fixed, equal to the size of the phonemic inventory. Okay, but so far we still don't know if unordered languages are possible or not. Compared to ordered languages, unordered languages do not make use of the information in the order of the phonemes in a sentence. So it's not clear if they can be used to convey as wide a range of meanings as ordered languages can. Well, I claim that they can. Given an ordered language, we'll prove that we can always construct an unordered language such that we can perfectly translate between the two languages. First, we want to construct a list of all the finitely long grammatical utterances in the ordered language. Starting with an empty list, we first add all the grammatical utterances with a length of one phoneme to the list, then all grammatical utterances with a length of two phonemes, then three phonemes, etc. There is a finite number of grammatical utterances of each length, so every finitely long grammatical utterance will eventually be added to the list, and be on the list exactly once. We now want to construct an unordered language. Once we decide on its phonemes, we can construct an analogous list for the unordered language. Starting with an empty list, we add all the possible unordered utterances containing a total of one phoneme, then two phonemes, three phonemes, etc. Since the lists have the property that each finite utterance appears exactly once, if we pair the two lists up entry to entry, then each ordered utterance is mapped to a unique unordered utterance and vice versa. A mapping with this property is called a bijective map. With the bijective map, if we make it so that each unordered utterance has the same meaning as the ordered utterance it maps to, then we can losslessly translate anything from one language to the other. We call a pair of languages with this idealized translation scheme an idealized language pair. Thus, we have proven that for each ordered language, we can construct an unordered language that can convey exactly the same information as the ordered language. So yes, unordered languages are in fact possible. The reason that this is possible is that unordered languages compensate for the lack of order information by having much longer utterances. But how much longer do the unordered utterances need to be? Well, we can calculate that. First, let's look at the case of translating from one ordered language to another ordered language. Since languages are messy, we first make a few simplifying assumptions. We assume that the two languages form an idealized language pair, like in the proof before. Obviously, this is not realistic, but we're only looking for an approximation here. We also assume that in ordered languages, the number of grammatical utterances that are L phonemes long is exactly k to the Lth power for some number k. For natural languages, this should be approximately the case, and we can interpret k as the effective number of phonemes after taking into account phonotactics, grammar, vocabulary, etc. If we have an ordered language with an effective number of phonemes k, then we want to find the possible positions n on the list that are occupied by utterances of length l. Since the utterances are sorted in increasing length, so from short to long utterances, 
If the nth utterance has length l, then n must be greater than the number of utterances of length less than l, and n cannot be greater than the number of utterances of length less than or equal to l. To get the number of utterances of length less than l, we sum up the number of utterances of each length from 1 to l minus 1. So we get the sum k to the 1 plus k to the 2 plus dot 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 until k to the l minus 1. This is just a geometric series and so is equal to k to the l minus k over k minus 1. Thus the lower bound of n must be that expression plus 1. Similarly, we can find that the upper bound for n must be k to the l plus 1 minus k all over k minus 1. We can invert the bounds for n to find what the length l must be given any value of n. Using the lower bound, we get that the length l of the utterance at position n of the list must be equal to the floor of log base k of k minus 1 times n plus 1. We can now translate from ordered language 1 to ordered language 2. If they have k1 and k2 effective phonemes respectively, and we have an utterance in language 1 of length l1, then its position n has lower bound k1 to the l1th power minus k1 all over k1 minus 1, and then add to that plus 1. This position corresponds to an utterance in language 2 with a length that is equal to this messy expression right here. And this is the lower bound for l2, the length of the translation of the utterance into language 2. If we remove the parts of the expression that don't really matter and we simplify it, this lower bound is approximately equal to log base k2 of k1 times l1. We can do a similar thing with the upper bound of l2 to get that it's approximately log base k2 of k1 times l1 plus 1. What this means is that if we have the same text in two ordered languages, the length of the text in the two languages tends to be approximately linearly proportional with the ratio being around log base k2 of k1, and this result should be fairly intuitive. However, this does not hold when translating into an unordered language. To analyze this, we can do the same calculation, but now translating from an ordered to an unordered language. We again assume that the two languages form an idealized language pair, and in addition, we assume that the unordered language has k effective phonemes, so every unordered utterance using the k phonemes is grammatical. But how many utterances is that? Since the language is unordered, the only information available in an utterance is the array of phoneme counts. So the number of distinct utterances of a length L is simply the number of distinct phoneme count arrays with a total phoneme count of L that can be made using the k phonemes of the language. Using the stars and bars theorem, also known as the sticks and balls theorem, we get that it's equal to L plus k minus 1 choose k minus 1 which is L plus K minus 1 factorial over L factorial and K minus 1 factorial. We can now find what positions N on the list are occupied by unordered utterances of length L. First, N must be greater than the number of utterances with length less than L, which is the sum of the number of unordered utterances of each length ranging from 1 to L minus 1. The sum can be simplified to just L plus K minus 1 choose K then minus 1. The lower bound of n is then 1 more than that, so it's simply l plus k minus 1 choose k. The upper bound is a sum extended up to the length l itself, which turns out to simplify to l plus k choose k then minus 1. We can now try to invert these bounds to find the length l given the position n. There is unfortunately no closed form expression for this, but we can still come up with bounds and approximations. From the lower bound, if we use the definition of the choose function and manipulate it a bit, we get L times L plus 1 and multiplied until L plus K minus 1 is less than or equal to K factorial times N. The product on the left hand side contains K terms and each of the terms is at least L, so it can be bounded from below by L to the K. Hence, we get that L to the K is less than or equal to K factorial times N. In other words, L is less than or equal to the Kth root of K factorial times N which is an upper bound for L. We do a similar thing to the upper bound for N to get a lower bound for L, which turns out to be the kth root of k factorial times N minus k is less than or equal to L. Putting these together, we get that L must be in the interval between these two bounds. However, the size of the interval is the effective number of phonemes k, which may be on the order of 10 or more, so the bounds are not very tight. We can instead use the average of the bounds, so the kth root of k factorial times n minus 1 half k 
to approximate L, and while it always underestimates L, in practice the error is usually less than 1, so it works fairly well. With this approximation, we can now find how long the unordered translations will be. Let the ordered and unordered languages have K1 and K2 effective phonemes respectively, and let the ordered utterance have length L1. Then the position N of the utterance has lower bound K1 to the L1th power minus K1 all over K1 minus 1, then plus 1. The unordered utterance length L2 is then approximately lower bounded by this complicated expression. As before, we can remove parts of the expression that don't really matter and simplify it to get approximately the k 2 root of k2 factorial over k1 minus 1 times the k 2 root of k1 to the l1th power minus 1 half k2. Similarly, from the upper bound of n, we get the same thing for the upper bound of l2, just with l1 plus 1 instead of l1 in the exponent. What these bounds tell us is that the unordered utterance length L2 grows exponentially with respect to the ordered utterance length L1, with the base of the exponent being the k tooth root of k1. This means that for each additional phoneme in the ordered utterance, the length of the unordered utterance is multiplied by the k tooth root of k1. Remember that in the case of translating from an ordered to ordered language, the length L2 only grows linearly with respect to L1. So the length of the unordered utterance grows much, much faster. Let's put some concrete numbers in there. I estimate that English has an effective phoneme count of very roughly 10, so let's say that K1 and K2 are both 10. If we have a very short ordered sentence that is L1 equals 10 phonemes long, then L2 is a reasonable 31 to 41 phonemes long. If we have a medium-sized ordered sentence with L1 equals 30 phonemes, then L2 is around 3,600 to 4,600 phonemes long, so more than 100 times the length. Now, a somewhat long sentence like the previous one can easily contain more than 100 phonemes, and an L1 of 100 would translate to an L2 of around 36 billion to 46 billion, which would take around 100 years to say. So yeah, no wonder why word order is a thing, huh? By the way, this has some interesting implications from an information theoretic standpoint. There's this concept from information theory known as entropy, which quantifies the average amount of information obtained from observing a random variable. Entropy denoted by H is defined as the natural log of 1 over the probability P of observing an outcome, average over all possible outcomes. In particular, if we have an unknown variable x with d possible values that are equally likely, then this entropy h of x is the natural log of d. Now, let's say you're in the middle of listening to someone say an utterance, like right now, and you want to calculate the entropy of the next phoneme, the nth phoneme. Then we let x be the random variable of the part of the utterance you haven't heard yet, and let xm be the random variable of just the nth phoneme. Since entropy simply quantifies the amount of information, the entropy of xm must then be the entropy of x before hearing the mth phoneme minus the entropy of x after hearing it. So given that we have already observed xm, if we now assume that the utterance has some length l and every possible utterance that fits the already uttered phonemes is considered to be equally likely by you, the listener, then we can calculate the entropy of the mth phoneme. In the case of an ordered utterance, if we have already heard the first m minus 1 phonemes, then the number of phoneme positions left is l minus m plus 1, so the number of possible utterances is k to the l minus m plus 1. After hearing the mth phoneme, the number of possible utterances is k to the l minus m. The entropy of the mth phoneme position xm is then the log of k to the l minus m plus 1 minus the log of k to the l minus m, which simplifies to just log of k. However, things are a bit different when it comes to unordered utterances. If there are l minus m plus 1 phoneme positions left, the number of possible utterances is exactly the number of distinct arrays of phoneme counts we can make with these l minus m plus 1 phoneme positions and k distinct phonemes. Using the sticks and balls theorem again, also known as the stars and bars theorem, this is equal to l minus m plus k choose k minus 1. Similarly, after hearing the mth phoneme, the number of possible utterances is then l minus m plus k minus 1, choose k minus 1. So the entropy of the mth phoneme is the difference of the logs of these two expressions, which we can simplify to just the log of 1 plus k minus 1 over l minus m plus 1. Here's a plot of the entropy as a function of the phoneme position m for both an ordered and unordered utterance. 
Note that in the ordered case, the entropy of a phoneme depends only on k, while in the unordered case, it also depends on l minus m, which is the number of phonemes we haven't heard yet. When l is equal to m, so when hearing the very last phoneme, the entropy is simply log of k, the same as in the ordered case. But as we move towards the start of the utterance, l minus m gets larger, so the entropy of the phoneme at position m gets lower and lower. There's a caveat though that this analysis assumes that the listener knows how long the utterances are going to be, which in practice is rarely the case, so these results might not be that realistic to be fair. But from our simplified model, we can still see that information is roughly evenly spread throughout an utterance if it is ordered, while it's concentrated near the end of an utterance if it is unordered. Okay, so what have we seen so far? We've proven that unordered utterances are possible, and we've seen that they grow exponentially long compared to ordered utterances. Additionally, we've also looked at how information is distributed in unordered utterances and how that differs from ordered utterances. But can we actually make one? Is there a way to construct a humanly usable unordered language? Well, I'll be exploring that in my next video, where I'll construct such a language and which will be a submission for Agma Schwa's fourth cursed conlang circus. See ya!